glasses up. Cheers. Hey everybody, we're back. We had a little bit of a siesta hiatus, but we're back with more great content, more great alcohol. Today we're drinking, uh, it's a blueberry uh, alcoholic beverage, kind of a moonshiny type thing. What do you guys think? Yeah, this is good. Yeah. It's like it's like cough syrup. It's what I used to drink yeah. when I was a kid and I wanted to get drunk. This mm -hmm. has notes of Dimetab and hints of NyQuil. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm <laughs> sensing a little uh, a little Robitussin in there. Mm -hmm. you know? And there's there's actual berries in here. Let's see, is this I Yeah, I did throw a berry in there. There's blueberries in there. Actual um, blueberries. What, tell me what you think of the blueberry. Oh, it's like an extra concentrated little bit of alcohol. Yeah, they're they're strong. It's good. Um, this is oh. it comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh that was man. Cake. Yeah, you know, you know how you get those those chocolate covered cherries with the alcohol. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Nothing compared to this. <laughs> Nothing. You know, I was thinking you get those those like those cards, like those DUI cards, like you can have so many glasses yeah, of wine, weight. so many yeah, beers right. for your weight, and you have to wait so many hours. It's like like you two blueberries, and you have to wait two hours before you can right. drive. Right. Yeah, I think um, you can find this in a mason jar wow. at whatever store sells spirits in your neighborhood. What's this called? Uh, it's called like Johnson something. I don't know. They have a very unique. It, it is a mason jar with a white label on. I'll put a picture in there and, and a link to it. And I, I think this stuff is is pretty much for getting drunk. I don't know. That, <laughs> this is not sipping whiskey. No, it's not. It's not sipping whiskey. Um, big hit at parties though. It's it has a sweet enough finish that it overtakes any heavy alcohol content. Yeah, that's since a lot of fights in the parking lot. Yeah, this is a... Um, <laughs> by the way, if you've got a DUI on this, how embarrassing would that be like, uh -oh. oh, i got a DUI, what well, was it, gin and tonics? Right. Whiskey? No, no, blueberry moonshine. <laughs> blueberry syrup. <laughs> is, that, is that the girl you were with? Blueberry moonshine? Right, right. No, yeah. no, that's, that's what I drank. So, yeah. yeah, just this packs a punch. Be, be wary of that if you're looking to go down that road. Uh, on an unrelated note, today we're talking about a book about children and parenting called Dad is Fat by the famed comedian Jim Gaffigan. You probably recognize him from his white pale skin or his hot pocket routine. Um, I love Jim Gaffigan. He's really funny. Here's a picture of his book. Uh, he, I don't know if it's fair to call him a clean comedian. He does not like that term because um, clean comedians are usually He used awful. the word whore and I had to explain <laughs> that to my children because we were listening to the audio book in the car. Did he do it? Yes. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Audiobook is wonderful. Okay. I feel like I missed out on the experience. Um, before before we begin with the book, um, I don't have kids, so I'm going to tell you a story about my childhood, but I would like to hear a story about your kids. It's a short one. When I was a small small lad, um, back in the day when you would buy things at department stores, sometimes you'd have to go downstairs to this weird basement level to pick stuff up. It was just kind of a culture of the 80s. And it was Christmas time. It was busy. I was with my grandmother, and she had purchased... Um, m and still makes them, but it's a, it's a plastic candy cane, and it's filled with M&M's. Yes. My um, kids got one last year? Yeah. It's a very popular kind of tchotchke Christmas generic candy. And so we were walking down to this basement area so my grandmother could pick up this order. And um, I think I was like maybe two or three, and I pulled the lid off and dumped it all over the ground. It's like, you know, 25 people waiting in this lobby. And, uh, and as all these M&M's scattered to the ground, I look at it and go, oh, F this. <laughs> and uh, my grandmother turns beet red and like she was supposed to pick up a package it's Christmas busy season she grabs me she's like come on we're leaving the store like she was super angry um, so anyway that was my fun I, I feel like uh, you know one of the better childhood stories you guys have something either from you or your kids that kind of along the same well, I, as this I've got one of embarrassing my parents that centers around candy too okay so um <clears throat> my mom did jazzercise. This is yeah. like back in the mid eighties, <laughs> and and it was like it was like hundreds of women in a warehouse. There was somebody up on the, like a real auditorium stage mm -hmm. leading jazzercise. There was like a kids' playroom, and um, this one day my mom took me, and I went crazy um, running around the place. There was some girl, and I guess I was like hitting her with toys. I, I have vague recollections of this, like I was drunk, and. Uh, it turns out that I had eaten um, a sugar daddy 
beforehand. You know what a sugar daddy is? You used to get yeah. those off the ice yeah. cream truck. It's yeah, basically yeah. just like a, like a piece of caramel that was like this big, and I bought the extra big one for a quarter. Right. And I'd eaten that like right before, like ran straight in the car. <laughs> and I guess I was on this huge sugar high, and I was going crazy. And uh, typically, I was I was a pretty good little kid, mm -hmm. but this time, like they actually had to go get my mom like out of the thing, and like your son's out of control, and my mom was like writing home, and she was like, Brian, what's wrong with you today? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, did you have any sugar? Like, no, I just all I had was the big <laughs> yeah. diet. I didn't I didn't put two and two together. So yeah, I had I had a limited sugar diet after after my sugar rampage, hitting a little girl. It was a little phone. Like, you know, like the uh, phone with the face on it. And yeah, I, yeah. I was hitting her with the red thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. Oh. <clears throat> well, I, I, I'll tell you more from my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, I have two brothers that are younger than me. And um, so my dad, his idea of watching the kids was dropping us off at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And back in the 70s, you could do that. You know, it was the late 70s. And we went to see Good Guy, Good, Good, oh wait, Good Guys Were Black, one of Chuck Norris's first oh, solo okay. efforts. Yeah, I've seen, you know, I've seen, I'm right before VHS. the Octagon, you know, yeah, VHS. And so what happens was, is that my dad was gone for like hours. And I don't know if he was having flashbacks to the time when he was a kid when they played like cartoon reel, news reel, and all the rest of that <laughs> crap in the movie. But, you know, it was the same movie over and over. And they, we didn't have the multiplexes yet. And so we were just sitting there, so after the first two showings, we got bored and started doing karate in the lobby of the studio, you know, and the, the, the owner of the uh, movie theater, you know, he was just like, you know, you guys go sit down. He's like, I pooed from 7 Oh, okay, so you're so, a racist so, accent. So, yeah, exactly, because that's how I am. I've been drinking, I'm sorry. Um, it was the blueberry. Exactly. So, but, so we went and sat down for like two minutes. You know how kids are. Yeah. We're back doing karate out in the <laughs> like, How old were you? We were like, oh, shoot, the age disparity. I think we were like eight, six, and five. Oh, nice. And so we were just like, you know, doing the whole nine yards. And what city was this in? This was in Inglewood. Well, it still had white people in it. So it was still fairly safe. And so, <laughs> and, um, so not that other people aren't safe. God, that sounds bad. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> he's not so, racist. It is the blueberry, right? Right. Blueberry so he, he puts us out, and we have to sit in the in the like on the sidewalk for oh, like okay. an hour until my dad gets there, and he's all, wow. "Well, what happened here?" Blah 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 blah. <laughs> and then so we told him, and you know, he couldn't get mad at the theater owner. You know, we were tearing up his lobby, and so I think we got like spankings or something. But, and then that was that. That's my story. This this book is. Um, I feel like it's more of a collection of comedy bits and, and Jim talking about his family. It's not really like a, a through and through story with a beginning, middle, and end. You could pick this book up and read a chapter and then flip 30 pages and read another chapter. Um, there's, a, there's so much packed into this book. Jim lives in New York with his wife and five kids. And uh, that, I, I don't understand that in itself. You, you've got four kids and I've, I've been with your kids in like a public place and I think like... There's kind of a lot going on to manage these people, all of them at once. But then I do the math of, okay, five, and in New York City. I feel like that would be a pain in the ass for me in New York City, just wandering around. like. Yeah, he talks about that. He says it is a real pain in the ass. Right. And, he, and the, the thing that got me is that he lives in a five-story block. Uh, I'm like, wait, wait. That doesn't like, compute. You walk up five flights of stairs, right. like... Any time you go anywhere, how is that possible? And they said they had like two bedrooms, yeah, yeah, or something ridiculous like that. I mean, albeit these buildings are old mm -hmm. and the bedrooms are probably huge, but still, five kids and one. Oh, that's insane! So I don't know if you, we we just moved, but before that, for like four years, we lived in a two bedroom apartment with our four kids. Are you kidding? So me? I totally, I totally, I yeah. Oh, then, you know, he talks about with he's there's diagrams in the book, but he's got this rotation system where like. One kid goes uh -huh. to sleep in this room, two kids go to sleep in this mm -hmm. room, and then the baby's out here, and then like they shift it around after an hour. Did you have, mm -hmm. when you lived in the two-bedroom house, did yeah. you have any shifting like that? He, he, I think he's a better parent. He loves his kids more than we do, because what we do is at bedtime, we just like put them all in the room, and like you can do whatever you want in there, just don't come out and bother us. So you like, you hear them singing <laughs> songs, and they like have stuffed animal fights, and all kinds of stuff goes on until they eventually all pass out. 
But yeah, that's what we do just for mm-hmm. our own sanity. You, you've been over, like we just say go to bed and now we're going to talk with Dan and Mel. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, your kids seem very well behaved in that aspect in terms of you just tell them like, hey, go do that. And he, he talked about how there was like, story, there was this weird cycle of like, first there's story time, then there's cuddle time, then there's like, and there's right. this big diagram of them all in, it just turns into like, they're all in the king size bed. Yeah. And he's got like, one butt cheek on the side of the mattress, right. and that's right. all he's got. <laughs> um, did you have a favorite uh, bit or story from this, this collection of short so stories? I listened to the audio book. Mm-hmm. Right. And there were so many times where I was like laughing out loud. I'm like, do I need to pull over because I'm laughing so hard? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't, do you have one? I have one. Here, let me, yeah. We'll get a prime here. I have, there's, he's talking about the things that his kids say at age, I think it was like two or three, where it sounds like they're saying something else. So right. he takes his kids to, I think it was like a grocery store or a Jewish deli. And uh, his daughter's throwing a tantrum, and he's like, here, have some juice. And they're in this predominantly Jewish neighborhood, and she's right. like, I don't like Jews! And I hate <laughs> Jews! <laughs> Jews yeah. And he's like, oh, gosh. Like, and there was some other one where his son had a, a big twig, and he hit mm-hmm. some other kid, and he said, like, I hit you with my big dick. And he meant to say big, big stick. But the little kids kind of fumble the, uh, the way the words sound. Um, I enjoyed I, I read the, the paperback version. I read most of this on my lunch break at work, and I would sit there and just start cracking up. Um, the, it's really funny, and the way that he takes this, there's a tone in which he, he's a very good dad and, and loves his family and loves his wife, but he also is able to make fun of all that. talks about how his mm-hmm. wife has like her yearly child, and how she's right. so infertile, and, uh, and they have so many kids. Um, I, yeah, I don't know, it's just, there's so much to like about this little book. Right, right. No, I have one story about... The, the, the name mm-hmm. calling bad language. I was driving down the street. I guess I have road rage from time to time. I don't know. Um, but my some kid ran out in front of my car, mm-hmm. and my son was in the back seat. And he was like, "That little bastard!" <laughs> and I was like, "What? How old is he? Stop!" He, he was like ten, and I was like, "What do you do? stop? You know, I'm like you can't be doing that, man." And I was like, "Daddy can say things like that, even though he shouldn't." Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person, Daddy's out in the street fist fighting somebody's daddy. You know, so I'm like, "You got to be cool, man." Mm-hmm. You know, well, he goes, "Well, I don't know. I can get mad at him because yeah. he didn't know any better." Yeah. You know. So this morning on the way to church, this actually happened this morning. So I, I've been known to, to drop a swear word or two. What? <laughs> yeah. It's happening. You? <laughs> you? <laughs> and my kids know this. Uh, they, they know that it's there's a double standard. I can use these no-no words and they can't. So this morning we're driving to church and, um, <clears throat> and my daughter says, Dad, I know what your favorite part of a computer is. I'm like, oh, what's, what's that, sweetie? The cursor. <laughs> <laughs> talks about when he had a swear jar. I didn't grow up with one of those, but it was a swear mm-hmm. mug. Yeah. And he said that it had like a little bit of money in it and it was promptly hit by a football right. and like broke and then he started swearing again as soon as it was broken. Uh, I, I tried to wrap my head around the things they did on a daily basis, let alone the vacations, because mm-hmm. that just... Yeah, like, the vacations are crazy. Yeah, he, was, he flew to, to Salt Lake City to do a... I think he had like a gig there and then he tried to go skiing and mm-hmm. it was like... Super expensive, and his kids wouldn't eat any food. And yeah, um, so you know, one thing um, they, 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 I, it was right in the very beginning of the book. He talks about they went they went hiking with their friends who had one kid, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, um, and and that just so resonated with me because it's like when you have one kid, if you know one person, that, if you know someone that has only one kid, or, or I think about when we had one kid, it's like I, I call it that you're raising the one perfect child. And just so much of your life revolves around this kid, and you have to do everything right. You can't wake the baby when he's sleeping, and, and you have to hit all these particular milestones and, and bring all this junk along. Um, and yeah, anybody who has only one child is obnoxious. I think it's you just have to be because you don't know what you're doing. I, I don't know about that because, like, so even though I have brothers and sisters, they were. Uh, from a different relationship my dad had. It wasn't when he was together. I wasn't the product of my mom and dad, the only one. He you know, ended up being with somebody else, and they had other children. So I was raised as an only child, you know, that kind of thing. The one thing that I do, I, don't, I wasn't obnoxious, but I was, 
basically hard to, I think, get to know, in a sense, because I was always just by myself mm -hmm. and kind of learned to put my guard up. So I didn't really have this group dynamic, you know, that was going on that I see in my kids, you know, with one another. You know, I see them fighting all the time. I know your kids, they probably fight. You know, and then yeah. I see the way they talk to each other and the way they fight. And I told my kids the other day, I was like, you know, I'm glad I grew up a single child. You make me <laughs> glad that I didn't have any immediate siblings in the house with me. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. One of the things um, that, that I'm reminding of uh, when I read this book was that people have been having kids for a long yeah. time. And even, you know, everybody who has a kid is by definition ignorant of how to raise a child. It's the first time yeah. you're experiencing uh -huh. it, but this is something that's been going on for a couple thousand years, um, mm -hmm. and you're just the latest person to figure this out. So it's kind of like, you know, everything's gonna be okay. Even if you have five kids and you live in a small New York apartment, um, you know, you're, you're actually not really breaking new ground. Everything's gonna be all right. Right. I like that he says in there, like, uh, every time a woman gets pregnant, it's always a big surprise to everyone around her. Like, did you hear Cindy's pregnant? Right, like, it's right. a huge big deal. They're like, nah, it's not that big a deal. People are pregnant for you. People are pregnant out. Yeah, like, right. And then the other thing that he, he commented on is when the baby comes, everybody wants to know the weight. I have no, mm -hmm. I have no idea what I weigh now as a baby. Don't care. It doesn't right. get me anywhere. It's like what you have to ask. What did the baby weigh? And then right. the, the standard response. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's big. Right. Two pounds? Right. That's big. Two pounds? That's big, right. pounds. That, that's big for a preemie. It's going to survive the winter. That's yeah. good. Good. Yeah. Okay, so one of my favorite lines from this book, um, there's basically no difference between feeding a two-year-old a taco and throwing a taco on the floor. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he couldn't have hit it on the head more correctly in yeah. that statement. It's so another true. one, I don't remember the exact line, but he's talking about um, the, the his kids crawling into bed and mm -hmm. then wetting the bed and him like trying to scoot over and, and pretend like he's not noticing so that his wife will wake up and change his sheets. That, that's like a nightly thing. I saw some old kids right. that wet the bed all the time and they always want to pee on my side oh my so that the mom's side is dry so they can snuggle with her over oh, there. Yeah, that one crazy. had me dying. I never had that happen in, 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 in the bed when, you know, it was over my wife. But the one thing, the funny, this is, this is insane. She's up, it's like two in the morning and you know, I'm in the twilight sleep because you just woke me up because I can hear the baby and that kind of thing. And so I'm laying there. I'm like, doing this. And I'm like, do you have a water bottle? Are you spraying and cleaning him or something? Oh, he's peeing in my oh. face. <laughs> she has a diaper now. Oh. And he's just letting it go. Oh, and no. she doesn't stop. She doesn't try to pull the diaper because she's too busy laughing. <laughs> She thinks the whole thing is hilarious. Oh, you got R. Kelly. Man, yeah. I'm like, you know, un unintentional water sports. You know, there's oh. just, it was wrong. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things. I didn't mean to tell you. Yeah, that. man. So, speaking of potty humor mm -hmm. um, and, and not really related to this book, one of our kids, I won't say which one because I don't want to embarrass them, but we had one kid that every time they got in the bath, like over the course of like a year, year and a half, they would always poop in the bathtub. It was like, it was like some of the warm water hit them and then like <laughs> released them. It got to the point where like, we wait until we change the diaper. We're like, right, okay, we're good right, to go. Right. Now we'll put this child in the bath. And then like, where does it come from? How is that possible? <laughs> we got really good. Like we had a system where we're like, okay, now we have to drain the water and clean it up and throw it away. Yeah, and then right. we have to sanitize everything. Like we, we, oh we could do it like God. five, 10 minutes. How do you fish that oh. out? Yeah, I, you don't want to know. You don't want to know the process involved. One day you'll do it, and you'll yeah, just feed it more firm food. Oh, you know, put the hair yeah. strainer in there. Oh. That's dude. I don't know. You know how people like your coffee cup. Coffee makes me poop. Yep, that's you know, absolutely. That's a, yeah, he, he was, he was, that was the concept for him when he was younger. Warm water. Poop. Warm water yeah, I feel like this book is hilarious, but you can't really do it justice talking about the book. You have to read this book. Right. And I would maybe say go for the audio book because it was it was good to read it, but I feel like I missed out on a lot of the experience, especially yeah. if Gaffigan read it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I listened to it with my kids and they they loved it, except for having to explain to them what a whore is because he uses the word whore. But what Thanks was the context? Jim. I'm trying to remember. It was fun oh. too. It was it was something to the effect of like um, he's talking about having a lot of kids and being Catholic and like people like asking him like was your mom Catholic and he's like no my mother was just a whore. And he's like <laughs> what's a whore, Dad? I've never heard that before. <laughs> 
Because he had that whole bit of like uh, six kids Catholic, like, like that's his, yeah, yeah, his right. whole thing, like right. the explanation for it. Um, so I guess you, you'd recommend that people check oh, out this book? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. This one's oh, good. You, you got to. I mean, even if you have no intentions on being a parent, this is something that you should just pick up just for the laugh factor of it. And, you know, the one thing, the, the, the things that I liked about the book was the fact that when I first saw the title, you know, Dad is Fat, I thought it was just one of those things where he's just talking about his kids mm -hmm. and, you know, how they're, they act and how they act towards him and that kind of thing. But he goes into, like, how his mom treated him, how his yeah. dad treated him, that kind of thing, how his wife reacts to the kids. Mm -hmm. And so you get all these different little stories in these different ideas of things, and, and it makes it a well-rounded book. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah, I, I would say definitely check this out. I don't have kids, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And there's there's a lot to laugh at and like. And I think if it's been a long time since you've picked up a book, this is a great place to start because it's it's yeah. such an easy and inviting read. Um, and definitely, if you you know if that's still too much of a, a jump, get the audiobook. You will you will laugh. And even if that you're like no, I don't know, look them up on YouTube. There's so much to like about this. Uh, thanks so much, guys. We'll be back with more great episodes very soon.